We have the ladies' council here. How many in the ladies' council? If you're in the ladies' council, come up here real quick. I don't know where Diane is. Oh. I did. Huh? Yeah. Is she back? Check, check, one, two. All right, sorry. How you doing, bro? Sorry about the uh, little delay. But we had to make a decision this morning. 
Uh, usually, we always have our homecoming service and dinner on the first Sunday of November of every year. And there's been so much that's been happening here lately. Uh, we just had the big dinner last night for uh, Brother Ray's ministry and, and my birthday. Uh, next Thursday night is a trunk or treat and uh, all the things that's been happening. And we just thought it'd be better since we're reorganizing now to um, pass on homecoming this year and it'd still be on the same time next year, first Sunday of November, like it's always been up next year. Um, so, does everybody agree with that? There's just been so much going on. We don't want to keep hounding everybody. You can't do it so much. So, we are postponing homecoming this year until the first Sunday of November of next year. And then I'll be back on schedule. Yeah. So, before we make that announcement, we want everybody to uh, vote on it. And all the uh, leaders said that's what we should do. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, how y'all doing this morning? last night. Yeah. How many was here last night? Y'all hear that message? Yeah. I told Brother Ray, I said, man, we ought to get him here for a revival. What do y'all think? Having him, Brother Larry, yeah. for a revival. Yeah. All right, that answers that question, Brother Ray. We'll get together on a date. Y'all want to have him for a revival, two or three or four days at revival? Yeah. Man, he was awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, Teachers meeting today at 5 o'clock. Okay, teachers meeting today at 5 o'clock. Uh, I guess there's no other announcements and all. Yeah, Trump or Treats Thursday. Trump or Treat Thursday! Trump or Treat Thursday, if you haven't brought candy or whatever, see somebody about bringing the, uh, what they need uh, for Trump or Treat. <laughs> it's going to be what, 7 o'clock still, right? 7 o'clock, Trump or Treat. And uh, dress the kids up and all, but we do ask that there's no evil, devil worshiping costumes and none of that kind of stuff. It's a Christian trunk or treat. And uh, so anyway, let, let's all come and have a good time. And uh, let the kids have a good time. How many birthdays we got? Any birthdays? Put your hands down, Brother Ray. We're going to give you a birthday party. Golly, <laughs> man. Gee, we sung happy birthday to you last night. How many more times you want it? <laughs> I mean, you raised both hands this time. <laughs> Any more birthdays? How about anniversaries? Well, let's thank the brother Ray again. <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Elijah was a powerful man of God. Amen? Amen. He was a powerful man of God. Amen. He had a bed that that house, that family had given him when he come through. That child was out in the field working for his father. And the heat of the day overtook him. And he cried, my head, my head. And he fell. He was taken to his mother. Then he was taken to the prophet's bed, the man of God's bed, and laid until the prophet came. And the prophet did something amazing. Now the child was dead. And he climbed up on him. And he said, little boy, are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for your miracle, little boy? And he stretched himself. There is a miracle being born here in this family. Amen? amen? There is a bed that we have had from day one. Amen? amen? We need to go back to that bed. Amen? We need to go back to the Lord and start again. Amen. We need to have the Lord's eyes, the Lord's mouth, the Lord's hands. Amen? amen? I don't know about you, but I can't hardly contain myself when Sunday rolls around, amen? But I get to come back home, amen, to where it all began. I'm excited to be here. Are you excited? Yeah! We only have one man who's excited. Oh, we got two. Look at there. <laughs> don't sit that down. <laughs> if you're excited to be here this morning, I want you to stand and go to me. that you have never given us before, Lord. Show us what we need to lay down at your altar, Father God. Give us the wisdom, Father God, that we need to go forth today, Lord God, that others will say, I want what they got. I want what they have, Lord. I want you to show me, Lord, how to get what they've got. Father, we give you all thanks and honor and glory for what you're going to do in advance right here this morning. And all God's children say, Amen. Y'all stay standing. Come on. I wonder the way this right
we thank you, Father, for the privilege, Father, to come into your house this morning, Father, and our brothers and sisters in Christ, Father. And no Father, none of us are perfect, Father, but you'll love us, Father, and you accept us into your place and worship, Lord. And pray, Father, that you straighten our hearts and our minds out this morning, God. Open us up, Lord, and receive your word, Lord, and help us to hide it in our hearts and we can live it, Father, and show it to others to be a life of the law, Lord, and our families and loved ones. To be able to lift a brother and sister up in Christ, Father, in their time of need, Father, when they're down, Lord. Pray, Father, that we would pass and bring your word this morning, Father. Mm-hmm. Lord, bless, Father, and help you, Father, bring your word and give it to him. Pray to you the tithes and offerings given in this morning. Do this for the building of the kingdom. Bless those who have to give and those who don't like, Lord. You know our hearts, Father. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Oh, hey. Oh, they tell me 
Feels good in here this morning. It's good to see everybody here. Good to see you. Everybody ready to praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah buddy. And get this dessert out of the way. And then Brother Ray gonna bring us some meat we can chew on now. Yeah. Man. Give me a Bible. i 
Brother Mike, would you come down this phone to my wife? <laughs> Once again, I want to thank everybody that worked so hard. We had an awesome time last night. Thank you, Faith Riders. With the say my family let me down, but Faith Riders did Hallelujah. So I want to say thank you for being here and working so hard. Thank you for all those that cooked, those that cleaned. The church looked beautiful, smelled beautiful, the food was awesome. And it was just all so good. And I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for making my pastor feel welcome to my mother. It's the first meal my mother's been to a church in probably five years that she didn't have to cook over half of the meal. So thank you for blessing her. She didn't have to do anything to show up and be blessed. And that, that just touched my heart last night. But all the love. And thank you for everything. We just love you. We're looking forward to more of what God's going to do. I'm excited about being on the team of Faith Riders. Hallelujah. Tonight, Brother Tyler Spare and his family is going to be with us, and i got a special retreat for you guys. How many of you love to see young people serving the Lord? Yeah! Hey, I like to see old people. Look here. I told you we needed the, the youth for the fire and the, the older for the wisdom. How many of you got fire and wisdom from Pastor Jones last night? Woo! He had the combination of both. Tyler Spinner's daughter was the young lady that went to that. I about called her out last night and I didn't. And she's got a song she does on the guitar. That her mom, who's backslidden right now, we believe she's going to be saved and God's going to save her, deliver her, get her back in the ministry. Her name is Brandy Spinner, Tyler's ex wife. She wrote a song and Raina's going to come and sing that song tonight and part, we'll do a special for her. She was the young girl that did some playing on the keyboard. I think Thomas was. Giving her some pointers, hallelujah. She's playing keyboard, playing guitar, playing it all just under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And God's just blessing. She's going to be here tonight. It's going to be an awesome time. So come out and, and be with us tonight at 630. We're going to have an awesome time in God's house. I want to talk to us this morning about standing. If there's one thing I learned, I, I can hear an elderly teacher. He's still alive. He's got to be over 100 years by now. Brother Newton from Home Bible College. He used to say, you've got to learn some stayability. You've got to have the ability to stay, the ability to stand, and the ability to keep moving forward even when you don't feel like it. I want to talk to you on that thing that this morning. That was what was on my heart last night and this morning. And I think about celebrating 20 years. It's not me. If you thought that I was going to celebrate me, you, you missed the party. Hallelujah. I wanted to celebrate that there is a God that can keep you in the midst of the trials. A God that can pick you up when you fall. And a God that can use you on the journey when you're not even quite got it all together. Hallelujah. I'm doing a little bit better than I did a time or two before, hallelujah. But I remember days that God allowed me to preach. And I really wasn't fit to preach. It's just the truth. But there have been days where I stood up in the pulpit on a Sunday morning. I just said, oh, man, my life was such a mess. Not anymore. In my, I've been through those days. But somehow God loved me through my own trials. Not once did I ever hear my dad. I heard people say, I have no use for you anymore. I had people tell me that they could care less. I had family tell me. Hallelujah. But my daddy God, Brother Thomas, never not one time did he tell me, I'm done with you. Not one time did he tell me that I was unusable, that I was dirty, white, trash. No, he always loved me. He always encouraged me. He always put his arms around me. And I wanted to bring you a, an encouraging word this morning that through Christ we can be strong even in the midst and weakness. And when we are weak in Christ, we are actually strong. Hallelujah. You'll be all right. If you can't hear me, raise your hand. If you can't hear me, young lady. Okay. I'm ordering a battery charger, hallelujah. We're going to get us a battery charger for me 
return for batteries, we will have batteries every week, hallelujah. And it's not expensive. Proverbs! I can start in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Take it down just a hit. That's good. Thank you. 6 and 9. It says, And let us not. Somebody say not. not. Let us not grow weary in well doing. For in due season. We shall reap if we think not. Don't quit and give me the boots, modern vernacular. Don't quit when people turn their back on. Don't quit when you lost hope in yourself. Don't quit when the devil is in your ear telling you you're worthless. You'll never be anything. I want you to know the devil is a liar. I don't care who you are or what you've done. The devil is a liar and there's a harvest that God has for you. Hallelujah. I tell you what, some of us are standing in the middle of it in faith Friday, and some of us, we can't even imagine the good things that God has for us. But the only way we're going to get what God's got for us is we got to keep on
Judas was off the team. When he killed himself. Up until then, Jesus treated him right. Jesus loved him like the other boys. And there's some folks on your crew, you just don't have to love them. You just don't have to love them, hallelujah. You don't have to love, listen to me, you can actually love the hell out of people. You can love them so much that they get the love that's in you, in them, and the devil runs off. Hallelujah. But if you quit, well, we are, you got to get a hold of this song that, now, my friend said, Brother Rick Ryan said he wrote it. He wrote a song that says, Behind every loser, someone who quit. When I said I'd never leave you, that's exactly what I meant. Listen to that. You may be the difference in somebody's life being a total wreck and a total mess. Have you given up on people? Look here. There's people that I love. I haven't given up on them. I just had to draw some boundaries. And I'm believing for my family to be saved. I'm believing for them to be delivered and set free. Let's keep reading. It says in verse 16 of Proverbs 24, for a just man, one translation says a righteous man. One translation says a good man. For a just man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Verse 17 says, Rejoice not when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when they stumble. Lest the Lord see him, and it displeases him. You know it, 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 it hurts the Lord's heart when we see somebody struggling. Have you ever seen a self-righteous Christian? I don't care how many rules and regulations you have, unless you're self-righteous. I know two different groups of holiness people. Both of them believe the same thing. Both of them believe you need to wear a dress if you're a woman and you need to be before. And all the other stuff that goes with that. But one of them has love. And they're full of love. I can be around those folks. They love. They, they treat you good. They're not going to look down their nose at you. They're following their convictions. And then I know a snotty group. But I don't even care to be around. I love them. I love them from a distance. Look here. If you, if all you got is to condemn me. That's, the, that's on the devil. There is therefore now no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we ought not walk around condemning each other. We ought to walk around loving each other, encouraging one another. And when we fall, we do well to get back up again. Amen. Hallelujah. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up again. I come back to tell you, I'm only in the ministry 20 years later because I got back up again. That's how we do I know what that powerful son felt like to come to daddy's house covered in pig manure. Hungry because I wasted myself in the world. But all the love of the father. The first thing the father did was hug him. Oh, when's the last time you just laid somebody a hug on somebody that didn't deserve it? Maybe it looked like they were worthy of it. You just laid a big old hug on. That's God's heart. Hallelujah. I want to challenge us at Faith Rider to be the church that we can put a hug around folks. I don't care if they stumble in drunk the first 15 times like Leon did. Hallelujah. We got to put our arms around them and love them. Hallelujah. And then you cover him up. You know, when a lot of church folks, they want to cover you up and then hug you. You put this jacket on and go take a shower in the back, give them a hug. Well, that's not the Father. The Father hugs and then covers. Hallelujah. You go back and search it out. And then he gives them that ring that says, you're in the family. So, and people, that messes people up too, Brother Kid. When people get that ring, they say, oh, he just showed up last week and he's in the family. Yes! Because listen to me, God's economy is different than yours and ours. God sees us all in the blood. No big eyes, no little use. Go to the cross and 
for is even the devil is alive. He's in ground. Hallelujah. It ain't evil. That's what evil is being awakened to the cross. But it's even ground. That's where we all stand, where we're, we're all together in this thing. Hallelujah. You know, Judas grew weary. I heard somebody tell me recently that he recovered, but I don't believe based on Jesus' faith. This is what Jesus said about Judas. Jesus said, Judas, it would be better that you had never been born. So that pretty much tells me that things didn't go so well with Judas. But regardless, Judas grew weary. And he didn't recover. He ended up in a just absolute mess. And you know what? About 60% of problems in all churches was Judas' problem. People worried about the money. Let me teach you a lesson real quick. I'm not preaching on money today. But let me teach you a lesson if you had not learned it. If you want to know the, the Judas's. Well, we could have sold that and we could have did this with it. Has God put you in that position? If you're not in that position, be thankful. Because there's a way of responsibility to come with that position. But besides all that, let me help you out. Like, like my granddaddy told me, he told me, son, when you put it in the plate, you give it to God, and it's up to God what's done with it. It ain't yours. I just heard a sad story just last night. The church closed down. This is a true story. A church closed down in the, in the Orangeburg area. And the elder from Lake City told the members of the church, if you have anything there you want that's yours, you can go get it. People that hadn't been to church in 10 years, 5 to 10 years, I might get in trouble for sharing this testimony, but I'm going to share it anyway because it's in the church all over. And be, be sure that at least one in here is worried about money because then it's just part of church. But, but you need to quit worrying. Because once you give it to God, it's God's. And listen to me. God don't need you to police the church. He don't need me to police the church. He sent the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is still a good job of leading the church. Hallelujah. And he'll still rise them up. And he still sits down. He still whoops. He still chastises. And he still corrects. And he don't need you to help him out. Amen. You just obey God and let God deal with it. They had been the church in five or ten years. They went to a cabin inside the church. Shame on them. If you're watching, shame on them. They have been the church in five or ten years. They're going to have to go to tear out cabinets that they help donate or whatever. Honey, when you get my granddaddy, it's all in. Because it's the Bible. When you bring it, you bring it to God. When we bring our tithes, <coughs> Now we do some voting, the Lord votes, but the Bible says it belongs to God. Right. Forget all that mess. There's a liberty in that. You just obey God and let God deal with it. We get a lot to pay. The air's on. We got water. We got one of the most best facilities in, in this region in South Carolina to worship God here. Get, quit worrying about the money, hallelujah, and let God deal with it. That's the Judas was worried about the money bag. Judas 
The woman brought the alabaster box and broke it. That was the turning point. Judas said, man, this is waste. And he walked off and he betrayed Jesus. Wonder how many folks have walked off from the church because of somebody's alabaster box and none of their business anyway. Hallelujah. And they walked off from the church and by the way, they walked off from Jesus. Amen. Judas got weary. He was on the right track. He was in the right crowd. Listen to me, Brother Leon. I had that was liberating for me. Because I'm not perfect. I'm not the best. But Jesus was hanging with the man. He was perfect. He never messed up. And he walked on. So that's a part of ministry. I heard T.D. Jake say years ago, he said, preaching and pastor and doing ministry is like driving a bus. Some get on. Some get off. You just keep driving the bus. I hope you stay on the bus because we're going somewhere at Faith Riders. Some of these other churches, I don't know where they're going, hallelujah. But I can tell you at Faith Riders, we're going somewhere. We're going to win the law. We're going to minister to believers. We're going to let the Holy Ghost have his way. The bus is going somewhere at Faith Riders. So hey, hang on for the ride and just trust God. Hallelujah. But then John Mark, he grew weary and he recovered. In Acts chapter 15, verse 35, it says, Paul said, I'm not taking John Mark with me. I want to read this, but I want to remind you that even the best have issues. Paul was one of the best preachers that ever lived. And he had a fallen out with John Mark that, that hurt his friendship with Barnabas for a season. Look here, Peter ain't with Paul until the religious folks showed up. And then they had some differences of opinion. So even in the best of the best, there's all there's still gonna be some differences of opinion. Because we all operated individually. We all got that fingerprint. Nobody else got that one right there. Thank God. That's mine. Give it to me from God. I'm thankful to have it. Hallelujah. I've seen so many people die. That's why I am happy to be 43. Look, I wouldn't be healthy as baby. I would be sick as. And somehow. 43 years later, I'm still alive. Yeah, I'm shouting glory. Hallelujah. I see them healthy coming down, and I'm still here, and I'm excited about being alive. I'm excited, and I'm following the town or two. But I got back up with God's help, and He's been so good to me. And I wanted to come back and tell you, you can get back up. And if you fall, get back up. Hallelujah. Don't grow weary in well doing, because there's a harvest coming. Don't quit before you harvest. Don't quit before you job. Brother Tyler is, is a construction worker, also as a preacher too. And look, if he's had some job, I see him. When he got done, the man said, come back and said, hey, you did more work than we thought we were going to do to give an extra bonus check. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God can give you the bonus check. The church might not give it to you, but God can give it to you. The pastor might not be giving it to you, but God can give it to you. Hallelujah. Sometimes the miracles come from unexpected places because God told Moses, strike the rock and water's going to come out. Hallelujah. Sometimes your miracles going to come from a place that you did not expect it. But if you just be faithful, it's coming. And then later on in Timothy, 2 Timothy 4.11, Brother Thomas, would you come to the keyboard and help me land this plane? 2 Timothy 4 11. Paul says, Bring Mark. He put it back together again. Mark can recover. So if you fall in and got out of fellowship, you can recover. Brother Dean's going to come in Jesus' name. I love Brother Dean. I've been praying for Brother Dean too. He's been on my heart. Before you said what you said, he's been on my heart. So we're going to love him. We're going to love him into wherever he's supposed to be here or wherever. I believe it's here or wherever. You can recover. What a challenge to you recover. He didn't go down here last night. He said, years later, he's, he's looking to recover. He had prayer with him. Sometimes life can get hard. Sometimes it can beat you down. Have you ever been through a spiritual Katrina? I have. I've been through spiritual battles that won't me to the ground. But somehow I've always got myself on the floor and laid out the woman over. I want to challenge you, but you don't know what else to do. 
Bring it to Jesus. When it seems unfair, I want you to remember Jesus. That's why I want to close this this morning. Now I preached the sermon that the research I found was not exactly biblical. Not exactly that it's not true, but it just ain't spelled out in the Bible. I preached that under the way of the cross, Jesus fell down. And we can assume that because in John's Gospel, John says Jesus was carrying his cross. And the other three writers, they said that Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus carry the cross. So we can assume that Jesus fell and helped with recruiting. He carried the cross. But regardless of what we don't have to assume, you close your eyes. Just listen to me for a moment. How you get to close your eyes. When Jesus was going to the cross for my sins, and my mistakes, he was beat so bad, he got some help. You might need some help. But Simon so a seed that's still bearing fruit. Simon so a seed that's still bearing fruit because now Jesus is helping us. Simon, in, in Simon, we all help Jesus get to Calvary. And the fruit of that now, Jesus is helping us. And he says, come unto me and I will. A righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again. How? The help of Jesus. Grow not weary and well doing. For if you faint not, we faint because we get low in strength, and when we get low in strength, if we depend on ourselves, we'll fall all the way down to the ground. But if we depend on Jesus' strength and remember it, remind the devil that we're yoked with Jesus. He'll carry us through the hard times of life. I'm looking forward to the next 20, 40, 60 years, however long the Lord Terry is coming to make come back tomorrow. Looking forward to serving the Lord. But I know I'm going to make it through the next 20, 40, 60. The same way I made it through the first. With the help of Jesus. He went to the cross for me. And he didn't get weary. He went all the way to the cross. He prayed for me on the hung there in my shame and my agony. He prayed, Father, forgive him. He gave up the ghost and died. He went all the way to the tomb. And for three days, hell celebrated. The religious folks celebrated. But early Sunday morning, <laughs> Jesus got up. And because he got up, hallelujah, he sent the Holy Ghost when he ascended glory and he said I'm going to send the comforter, the paraclete. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost and he's going to help you. Because Jesus got up, hallelujah. You have the help that you need and I have the help that I need. I'm still standing. It's all because of God's amazing grace. Oh, hallelujah. So I wonder this morning. I wonder if there's one that would say, Preacher, I'm not saved, but I heard about a Savior that can restore broken relationships. I heard about a Savior that can restore broken hearts. I want to be saved this morning. I want to give my life to Jesus. Pray for me. Hands bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? I want to be saved this morning. I feel the Holy Spirit dealing with my heart. Pray for me, preacher. Hands bowed, eyes closed. This room at the cross for you. There's room at 
the cross for me. Thousands have come, oh, but there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for me and you. One of you here, you say, preach, I'm saved. But I've been not now. And I'm in the process of recovery. It's been difficult. Pray for me, preacher. Hands bowed, eyes closed. I'm saved, but I'm in the process of a recovery. I've been not now. Pray for me, preacher. God sees those hands. God sees those hands. Father God, I just lift up each one of us this morning the faith drivers. Lord, we all need you to bring the fresh anointing on us. We all need your help. I'm so glad that you promised to send us help. I'm so glad that I don't have to look at the next 20 years and wonder how I'm going to do it. No, I know that your help is available. I know that you're going to help me. Lord, well, I'm so glad that I'm so glad that John, Mark, and Paul was able to get back together. I'm looking forward to being able to get back together with some folks that I've been out of relationship with that I'm called to work with. Lord, I'm so glad that that Jesus, whether you fell or not, you went all the way to Calvary for my sins. Washed away in your precious blood, you got up on that third day, conquering death, hell, and the grave. Now, Lord, there's hands all over this building that went up and said that they're in the process of recovery. They're saying they went through some difficult things that hurt. But I ask you to help those that need help this morning. And God, I just pray for a fresh and only for every man, woman, boy, and girl on our campus this morning. A fresh anointing that, that, that reaches out and touches our hearts, our emotions, our minds, our wills with the saturation of the blood of Jesus, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And give us a renewed strength and a renewed stamina. We declare that our strength. We look up to the hill from which cometh our help. We declare that our help comes from you, O oh God. We declare that you're the maker of heaven and earth and you're in control and you got it covered. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, beloved. <laughs> thank you for your grace and your mercy. Oh, God, I love you. And I'm honored to be able to stand and say I'm still standing. And it's all because of your amazing grace. It's all because you didn't treat me like church folks have. You didn't treat me like some of my family have. And Lord, be real honest. You didn't treat me like I've treated people in my past. But you love me. I want to say thank you for loving me. And Lord, I just declare I need your love to make it the next 20, 40, 60, 80 years. I need your love to make it, God. I'm dependent on you, Lord. I'm dependent on the help that comes from Jesus. I thank you for helping me, Lord. I thank you for helping me, Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Leon, can you come close to a song or whatever on your heart? Hallelujah. Brother Leon comes. If you won't pray for any reason, the altars are open and we'll pray for you. Any reason, the altars are open and we'll pray.
Jesus comes to this is Would you answer all this question or lie to hide the truth? Would you welcome him with open arms or even let him in? If Jesus comes to what then? If Jesus calls your number, would you leave today? Are you ready to lay down your worldly goods and slow down? Would you have to beg forgiveness? Or would you reach out and take his hand? If Jesus comes to tomorrow, what then? If the sky turns black as midnight in the middle of the day and somehow you knew that Jesus would soon be on his way Would you have to beg forgiveness? Or could you reach out and take his hand? If Jesus comes tomorrow, what then? If Jesus comes What man? Amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear. Let's all come back tonight at six thirty. You know, like I said, we're regrouping, restarting. Faith Riders Fellowship Church is back. We have slowly been gaining in attendance. Our Thursday nights, by the way, last Thursday night we had 95 people here yeah! on our Thursday night. Okay! And our Thursday nights and our Sunday nights have slowly been gaining and gaining. And so let's all come back tonight at 6.30 and into the house of God and let's praise God tonight. Let's all, we're a family. Faith Riders is a family. We love yeah! everybody. Hallelujah. Brother Q, you want to dismiss? Father God, we thank you for the time, Lord. We thank you for what your mighty spirit done here in this place. This morning, Lord, we have time to keep us safe. 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 We have